So I will be reviewing treatment for the two major forms of large vessel vasculitis, those being giant cell arteritis and uh, Takeyasu arteritis. So giant cell arteritis is the most common form of systemic vasculitis generally seen in older individuals. And there are really three main items of damage that uh, keep us quite uh, concerned about this disease. One being ischemic optic neuropathy, which may result in vision loss and blindness. The other is the risk for stroke, particularly in the vertebrobasilar territory. And the third is a later or long-term complication of the disease, which is development of aortic aneurysm. And of course, giant cell arteritis can also uh, present with uh, peripheral arterial disease symptoms, oftentimes in the upper extremities and rarely even involving the lower extremities. Now, historically, or for over seven decades or so, we have uh, used glucocorticoids for the treatment of inflammatory vascular diseases. And we know that there are benefits from the use of these drugs. They uh, prevent blindness. Patients uh, feel better. They often have constitutional symptoms, uh, myalgias, and other vascular symptoms. And, and their symptoms do improve. We are able to suppress systemic inflammation with these agents. On the other hand, glucocorticoids, of course, have a long list of adverse effects. Despite our best efforts at treatment, patients frequently experience disease relapses as we try to reduce therapy. And again, despite our best efforts at treatment, patients continue to experience vascular complications, including, for example, a stenotic disease in the subclavian and axillary arteries and uh, aortic aneurysms. So the uh, gold standard diagnostic test for giant cell arteritis remains biopsy of the superficial temporal artery. And what we're looking for is this transmural inflammatory process. The, um, artery responds to this inflammatory insult with hyperplasia of the intima layer, which results, of course, in the vaso-occlusive uh, consequences of this disease. So over several decades, we have uh, been able to understand the uh, immunologic players in this um, process. And we now recognize that there are activated dendritic cells that pull in T cells. There are activated macrophages that fuse to form giant cells, all occurring in the arterial wall, which in normal individuals should be an immune privileged site. So there is breakdown of tolerance and then infiltration of these cells in the arterial wall. We have also learned that one of the key players that facilitates crosstalk in, these, uh, in this inflammatory process is the cytokine interleukin-6. So essentially after seven decades or so of looking for a, an effective glucocorticoid sparing agent for GCA, it was identified that um, interleukin-6 inhibition is a key element uh, that can be utilized as, as treatment. So the monoclonal antibody tocilizumab, which you may have heard about quite a bit during the COVID pandemic, because it is used also for treatment of COVID, this uh, monoclonal antibody was evaluated in a landmark clinical trial of giant cell arteritis. Now, in these rare diseases, a clinical trial with 250 patients uh, is considered one of the largest trials to date. Patients were randomized to one of four treatment arms, either a 26-week course of glucocorticoids, a one-year course of glucocorticoids, or a six-week course of glucocorticoids in combination with tocilizumab, which is given as a subcutaneous injection either once or once weekly or every two weeks. The results of the trial were very interesting. It was demonstrated that if you treat patients with monotherapy glucocorticoids, your success rate, meaning having them remain in sustained remission over a period of one year, uh, your, your success rate is very low. You can see here with less than 20% of patients remaining in remission, whether you give them six months or one year course of glucocorticoids. And of course that 
in of itself is already accumulating substantial uh, toxicity. But if you then add on this interleukin-6 blocker, you are able to achieve a much higher proportion of patients who remain in remission at one year. So this a landmark clinical trial led to the FDA approval of this uh, biologic. Again, this is the only biologic that's approved for the treatment of giant cell arteritis in combination with a tapering dose of glucocorticoids. Of course, we want to evaluate the adverse effects of this uh, therapeutic agent. And it was actually seen that interestingly, the patients on monotherapy glucocorticoids actually had a greater uh, number of adverse events, again, related to glucocorticoid use. Um, and it was actually lower in those who received the study drug, mainly because these individuals also received a reduced amount of glucocorticoids. During the trial, fortunately, there were no uh, individuals who had permanent vision loss. There is a concern with this uh, tocilizumab drug where patients who have recurrent diverticulitis may be at risk of gastrointestinal perforations. Again, this is a rare uh, concern and fortunately none were seen during the uh, one year clinical trial. Of course, not every patient might be a good candidate for this biologic. We generally uh, do not initiate a biologic if the diagnosis of large vessel vasculitis is uncertain, if patients have recurrent infections, if they are at high risk of gastrointestinal perforation. The uh, drug may also affect liver function, and therefore we monitor this closely and we avoid its use in those with active liver disease. It may also cause cytopenias, and again, therefore, would be contraindicated in patients who may have baseline cytopenias. I, I have this picture here to, to, again, emphasize that when the diagnosis is uncertain, uh, we want to avoid introduction of immunotherapeutic agents. This was an individual where their PET scan raised concern for large vessel vasculitis. They did not respond to immunosuppression, and this was because the, the correct diagnosis actually was an angiosarcoma of the aorta. So again, we have to keep a broad differential, particularly when patients are not responding to therapy as expected. So we now have an updated algorithm as to how we treat giant cell arteritis, and in patients with visual ischemia, we treat with intravenous high-dose methylprednisolone, in those who do not have visual ischemia, we initiate high-dose glucocorticoids, generally prednisone, 60 milligrams daily. But then we assess all patients as uh, whether they are candidates for initiation of a biologic drug. If we do start tocilizumab, we then accelerate the glucocorticoid taper and again aim to provide a glucocorticoid sparing effect with this uh, biologic if the patient is not a candidate for tocilizumab therapy, then we continue standard glucocorticoid taper. But if the patient has relapses, then again, we assess them as to whether they are candidates for treatment with uh, tocilizumab. There are now national guidelines that have been formulated very recently and published last year. And the national guidelines do recommend the use of glucocorticoids with tocilizumab over using glucocorticoids alone, again, emphasizing the importance of trying to provide a steroid sparing agent to reduce the risk of glucocorticoid toxicity. In particular, of course, we want to utilize uh, this novel agent in patients who have recurrent relapses because they are the ones who are going to experience most use of glucocorticoids and therefore associated adverse events, and patients who have what we call large vessel involvement, meaning when there is evidence of aortitis, when there is evidence of aortic arch or other uh, territories being involved by the disease. We'll talk a few minutes about Takeyasu arteritis. This has some similarities to giant cell arteritis, but is much more rare. It affects one to two per million uh, per year. It uh, generally causes disease, uh, occlusive disease in the aortic arch branches, as you're seeing here. There's this very profound intimal hyperplasia that results in luminal compromise. 
We diagnose this generally by imaging studies. Shown here is a PET CT demonstrating FTG uptake in the wall of the aorta and in the carotids, again, highlighting the inflammatory nature of this uh, condition. And of course, if the patient presents with arterial occlusive disease in the context of an inflammatory process, we then treat with glucocorticoids and often use conventional immunosuppressive agents. But even in this disease, we have now entered an era of biologic therapy. And the biologics we used most often in this disease are the inhibitors of tumor necrosis factor. Interestingly, even though there are similarities between giant cell arteritis and Takeyasu, the clinical trials in GCA um, were unsuccessful with the use of TNF inhibitors. On the other hand, TNF inhibitors appear to have a role in the treatment of Takeyasu, particularly in patients who have disease that is refractory to our conventional oral immunosuppressive agents. It is humbling to note that because this is a rare disease, there have been no prospective randomized trials of these agents in Takeyasu. So their use is based entirely on retrospective cohort data that, should, that suggests that the majority do respond, but they may still experience relapses. One of the difficult things with Takeyasu is this is a patient who already at the first diagnosis already has significant vascular damage with occlusive disease involving, again, the aortic arch branches. So we see a lot of damage right at disease onset and patients continue to accrue damage as they progress with this disease. It is reassuring to see that these TNF inhibitors now may be our best chance at halting disease progression. So this is observational data. But what the investigators were able to demonstrate is that um, if we treat these individuals with TNF inhibitors, the majority of them are able to um, be maintained uh, without new vascular lesions. So, so the best chance of keeping patients from having new vascular lesions, new vascular occlusive disease, is by treating with these TNF inhibitors. On the other hand, if you use conventional immunosuppressive agents, or glucocorticoids alone, patients are much more likely to progress to um, progressive vascular occlusive disease. There is some interest, again, in the use of tocilizumab. Again, this is in contrast. So in giant cell arteritis, this IL-6 inhibitor appears to be remarkably effective. In distinction to that, uh, in Takeyasu arteritis, the uh, trial with uh, Tocilizumab actually did not meet its primary endpoint. Now, again, this is a rare disease. You will see that the two arms of the trial included 18 patients on placebo, 18 patients on active drug, again, highlighting how rare this disease is and how small the trials are with these agents. The primary endpoint of this trial that was conducted in Japan was time to relapse, and it was actually not met. They did see some signal of efficacy in a subset of patients, uh, but, but it is not as effective as we see in uh, giant cell arteritis. There is an interesting phenomenon when you treat patients with this drug because it is so effective at inhibiting interleukin-6, it essentially normalizes the patient's inflammatory markers and therefore removes that biomarker of disease activity. So we and others have documented and published that there are individuals who have disease progression despite suppression of their inflammatory process, at least as far as we can pick up uh, systemically. There are also uh, national uh, and international treatment guidelines for Takeyasu arteritis. They include recommendations to treat with glucocorticoids, as well as a conventional immunosuppressive agent. But in patients who have progressive disease, then it is recommended to introduce a biologic agent, either an interleukin-6 inhibitor or a TNF inhibitor. These are European guidelines and the US guidelines favor the use of TNF inhibitors. Again, even though these have not been evaluated in prospective clinical trials, there is ample observational data and use in clinical practice to demonstrate that TNF inhibitors may be our best chance 
to halt the disease progression that we see in Takeyasu arteritis. So in summary, I, I hopefully have shared with you that the landscape of treatment for inflammatory uh, vascular diseases is changing. We have now the opportunity to use targeted monoclonal biologic agents for the treatment of these diseases. In particular, we routinely use an interleukin-6 inhibitor for patients with giant cell arteritis, and we often utilize TNF inhibitors for Takeyasu arteritis. Obviously, we have a number of unmet needs. These patients are at risk for substantial morbidity and Takeyasu, even potential uh, premature mortality. You're seeing here a young woman who had a devastating uh, cerebrovascular accident due to the uh, arterial occlusive disease from Takeyasu arteritis. So uh, we definitely have, have work uh, to, to do in these diseases.